Hello, hello, everybody. Greetings from Ireland. You're very welcome to day one of this free upcycling clothing in the dirty pot boot camp. And I'm really excited to share some of my top tips and advice with you over the course of the next few days. So in case you're wondering who am I and where do I live? My name is Nicola Brown. I'm a textile artist developing a sustainable practice. I grow my own eco printing and natural dye plants and sharing my passion about working without traditional powdered mordants has made me connect with so many of you worldwide. So that's where, who I am. Um, if you'd like to drop a comment and say where you're tuning in from, please do. And I would just like to introduce Shauna to you. Shauna is currently in um, Switzerland, I think, and she's going to be helping me uh, in the back end of things. So it's marvelous to have another Irish person helping me and to know that she's just in another country altogether at the moment. So if you have a question, I will be asking you to drop your questions as a comment in the chat at certain times. I would prefer you not to ask questions unless I ask you to drop them in because it gets a little bit confusing for us both to try and find them. And I need to concentrate on what I'm sharing. So when I ask you, um, have you got any questions? Please just put three question marks in front and three behind. And that way, Sean is going to be able to identify them really easily. And she can star them for me and they look a different color on my screen. So I will be able to answer the questions for you. So um, if Shauna makes a comment in the chat, it's going to actually come up with my name. So don't think that I'm writing and talking to you. I'm not. That will be Shauna. So thank you so much, Shauna. I'm going to just uh, turn your camera off now. Uh, but I really appreciate all your help uh, fielding the comments. So um, it's important to say that this boot camp, it's all about eco printing clothing and garments in the dirty pot without using traditional powdered mordants. And all the information that I share with you is going to be applicable if you want to eco print a felt scarf, if you want to eco print a linen scarf, if you want to eco print fabric and make a garment. The eco printing information that I am going to share over the next few days that applies to all sorts of fabric, not just to garments. So if you're new to eco printing, by the end of this boot camp, you should have an idea and a step by step plan of how to, what fabric is the best and easiest to print. If it's garments, which garments I recommend as somebody who's new to eco printing garments. You'll understand the foundations of eco printing in the dirty pot without mordants. If you don't know what a traditional powdered mordant is, or you don't even know what eco printing is, you'll also understand what that is, what the process is. And you will be able to then go off and experiment for yourselves and have your first successful pieces if you're new. If you're an experienced eco printer already, I hope that you will pick up some tips and advice, you will enjoy the experience and we'll all have fun together. So without further ado, I'm going to start. And I, I just would say as well that if you happen to be watching this on the replay from a different country, you can drop your question in as a comment on YouTube and I will do my best to get back to you and answer your question that way. For those of you live, I can answer it live. So developing a sustainable textile practice, what does that actually mean? Well, we all have choices to make every day, you know, in our daily life, uh, you know, whether we drive to the shop, whether we cycle, whether we walk, how sustainable we are. Are we concerned about buying, you know, fruit and vegetables that have traveled from countries maybe as far away um, you know, in Ireland, sometimes people would buy beef from Argentina, for example, 
and there are implications with everything that we do. And there are also economic implications with things. And there are huge environmental implications um, in the textile industry with pollution, et cetera, um, you know, and carbon emissions. So it's very, very easy to get bogged down in all of this. It's very, very easy to get overwhelmed and then just decide, well, you're not going to do any of it whatsoever because it's just, it's just too big a topic. So what I'd like to do today is I would really like to just keep things very simple, strip things back to the basics. Every single garment that does not go into landfill that, that's a garment that's been saved and it will have a new life. It could be repurposed. It could be printed as it is. But that is the circular economy. It's trying to keep things out there, pass them on, do different things with them and not contribute waste. And I'm going to share a couple of um, slides with you in a minute, but I just have a little story to, to tell. And some of you may find this strange. So, both my parents were only children. So I have got no cousins, no aunts, and no uncles. And I only have two sisters. So when I was a child, I mean, until I was about eight or nine, I did not understand the relationships that cousins had. I did not understand that cousins shared grandparents. And I remember being devastated for one of my school friends when I discovered that her cousins and she and her brother had the same grandparents. I couldn't believe it. And I thought, wow, they've got to share grandparents because I only had my mother's mother. Her father was dead. My mother's mother. And I had my father's two parents. So I had three grandparents that were alive and I had two sisters. And one of the things that I was incredibly envious of, the only thing I was incredibly envious of was when these families who had more brothers and sisters and who had cousins and relatives, they used to get bags of hand-me-down clothes. So the oldest children um, in any sort of extended family, they would get the new clothes and then those clothes would get passed down around all the rest of the family. And often from county to county, and in many cases from country to country, people would receive a parcel from England or from America or somewhere in Europe from an Irish family that had emigrated and they were sending clothes back to people in Ireland. And I remember I was so envious that these friends of mine had all these bags of clothes to look through and to select things for themselves. And I was the eldest, so I always had totally new clothes or things that my mother made that were also totally new. And to me, there's something absolutely fantastic about going looking for items to recycle and items to upcycle. It can be garments, but it can also be the printing pots that, that I use to process my bundles in. It can be old metal pipes. So for me, I never ever had the feeling that if something was secondhand or pre-loved, that it wasn't as good as the new thing. I would have given my eye teeth to have things from other families and to have that excitement of going through that suitcase or parcel of clothes. So I've always enjoyed looking for things and having older things and repurposing them. So um, when I'm um, when I'm thinking about the, the textile industry and the garment industry, so the textile industry includes the manufacturers who it includes from the growing of the plant or the production of the fiber from an animal through to the manufacturer of the thread for the weaving or the you know the yarn to knit with so there's a huge big um sector there a really 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 big big sector and um, you might be saying, well, why recycle or upcycle garments and also things like vintage linen, tablecloths, what we in Ireland call napkins, but I'm not sure they're what you put on your lap if you're going to eat at the table. You know, we would have linen napkins, 
I'm not sure in some other countries if napkins are what we call nappies, you know, for a child to wear, but for a baby to wear, but I'm not sure, but I'm sure you understand what I mean. So the big question is why to recycle or upcycle and why does it feel really good to do this? I mean, there's obviously there is also the element of having fantastic and uh, unique pieces to wear. But if we look at the um, the statistics, um, it's absolutely, you know, it's shocking to me here. Um, this is a doctor, Dr. Alan Hood, and he's founded this um, alchemy. He's, he's founded a company or a business called Alchemy Technology. He has a lot of um, patents to his name and he's a scientist. And the single worst contributor to climate change, it's actually dying and finishing. It's the commercial dying and the finishing of fabric and the processes by which color and chemicals are applied. And they're responsible for 3% of total global CO2 emissions, which is absolutely extraordinary. If you consider that this is more than the CO2 emissions produced by shipping and aviation, all those flights combined, and it also causes over 20% of global water pollution. So that alone is, is definitely um, a reason why you would want to upcycle textiles, taking the beauty side of it out and you know their functionality, but to actually help contribute to a, um, a better environment, that's one thing. And then this is just absolutely extraordinary. Um, I have some figures from the US, but I also have some figures from the UK. And these are in an article by Rachel uh, Dottel and Jackie Gu, and it was in you know, a well-known publication. And the US throws away each individual person in the US, the average amount of clothing they throw away per year is 70 pairs of pants and footwear. And I just find that horrific. I just think it's absolutely incredible. But then we come and we see this here. And the sources for these two images are Bernardo's. They would be a charity, um, a charitable organization, and also from the Environmental Protection Agency. And studies have th shown that people throw out their clothing after wearing them an average of seven to 10 times. And if you think about that, I mean, my goodness, that, that's absolutely mind boggling. And as somebody who uh, is developing a sustainable practice, I actually have problems often getting rid of clothes that are totally disintegrating because I keep thinking I should wear it, I should wear it, I should uh, use it for something else. I cut things up and make rags, but ultimately they do end up, up in probably the compost heap because my clothes are all natural fabrics. So we've got... You know, the big question is why to recycle? And then the wonderful answer from the eco printing perspective is that eco printing in the dirty pot, it's an environmentally mindful way. It's a health conscious way of printing without those chemicals, the powdered mordants. And we can create stylish new pieces and it gives us a good feeling. It's good for the soul. Well, I think it is. We're creating that circular economy. And that's one of the reasons that I particularly love, um, you know, going to those charity shops, thrift stores, op shops, whatever you call them. I love looking in my own wardrobe to see what garment can, you know, what garment is in good condition, but it's looking faded, maybe. Um, can I then eco-print that and totally give it a new lease of life? Or can I bring it to a friend and give it to them and they can do something with it and they give me something of theirs? And eco-printing garments and also parts of garments, such as some cowls that I've printed recently. I have some images to show in a minute. But it helps you stand out from the crowd. You know that nobody else is going to have the same garment. Um, it's just really, you're an individual. You may have a commercially produced garment, but it stands out from the crowd, um, contributes to the circular economy. It saves you money. I mean, we all have to be careful of our budget. And in the current economic climate, that's even more important. 
you know, after COVID and then with all the the wars in different parts of the world. And I really feel so dreadful for people who live in that sort of a situation. But but that affects the economy everywhere else. So we have to be mindful of our energy consumption. We need to be looking to save money in all sorts of ways. You can look incredibly stylish eco printing garments and it just does our bit towards, um, you know, a sustainable practice. So today is all about giving you the information about the actual garments, the fabric, um, that sort of thing and whetting your appetite. Then tomorrow I'm going to go into the actual basics of eco printing and the how to etc etc but for today it is about um the garments so where would you source your garments from okay so i recommend that you ask your friends and family it's amazing how many people have sad looking white t-shirts linen shirts wool jumpers that they're not wearing etc etc look in your own wardrobe and see have you got something you absolutely love but it's seen better days and you would like to give it a new lease of life go to the charity and the op shops the thrift stores go to the vintage shops go to markets go to garage sales estate sales what we call a jumble sale and I recommend that you leave your name and number with thrift stores and making sure to let the volunteers who work there or the sales assistants know what you're interested in. In Ireland, for example, many of our charity shops now, they do take in beautiful old woolen blankets that would have been used on beds, but they don't actually put them out in the um, the sales area, often they keep them behind the scenes and they give them to people with dogs to just put in dog baskets. And so if I ask on occasion, one day I was lucky enough to get six blankets in the one shop and they were perfect. And I paid a pittance for them. They make incredibly beautiful pieces to eco print. And you can eco print a large piece as one blanket or you can cut out pattern pieces to make a new garment and print the pattern pieces. So you have different options there. So leave your name and number with um, with the charity shop if you have some um, you know specific things that you would like. And for those of you who live in a hotter climate, I also really recommend that you look for linen. Linen takes the natural color um, Without traditional mordants, it prints very well. It may not be as colorful as wool and silk, but it takes the color very well. Knitted cotton takes the color, in my estimation, better than woven cotton. So I would always prefer linen. So what, what I think um, the garments to look out for, and also to look out for things like blankets made from this um, fiber. So try to find items made from wool, from silk, from cashmere, from linen, from HEMP. I'm not going to say that word because YouTube actually might prevent my account. It might put a block on my account if I say the word, but you can read it there on the screen. From mohair, from cotton, from bamboo, and any um, any garment made from a natural fiber. They are the best and the easiest to eco print, whether you're eco printing with or without a mordant. And within that, um, with, within the, within the um, list of fabrics, you also can add in man-made fabrics that come from wool, wood pulp. So bamboo, Tencel, um, Lyocell is also a Tencel product. It's made from eucalyptus and uh, rayon. So things like viscose, rayon, Tencel, all of those may also be eco printed in the dirty pot successfully. So you can also look out for them. And garments and fabric, particularly garments, if a garment says dry clean only, 
for me, that is almost always the absolute best uh, item to get. And the reason for that is that, especially if it's a slightly older garment, the manufacturers are concerned if you put it in your washing machine, it's going to shrink or the color is going to run or whatever. Um, so what I would say is check the um, check, check the label of the garment, see what it feels like. Often the labels are down, you know, the side of the garment. They may not be in the neckline. And if it says dry clean only, chances are it's a more delicate fabric or fiber like wool, silk, cashmere, or mohair. You don't tend to find the cellulose um, fabrics, say, dry clean only as much as the wool, silk, cashmere, mohair, and also maybe alpaca. And often older silk tops, they'll have big shoulder straps or shoulder pads, but you can take those pads out and you can... Um, you know, revamp that garment, they often look totally new without the shoulder pads in. So don't be nervous about that. And sequins and beads in the silk or in a garment, they can also print wonderfully. Or if you have um, a wool top, for example, and there's a little bit of a polyester trim, the polyester trim will not take the eco printing color. Polyester really doesn't take the color. Nylon does, interestingly enough, but if you have some polyester silk on a, on a wool top, you can get really interesting effects. And if you have any doubts about whether you're going to get good results or not, use onion skins as your eco printing material. And then when you're on the hunt for garments and you're in that humor, don't forget to look for other things. So things like leather belts, which you can use as bag handles, old woolen blankets, sheets, curtains, Fish kettles are long, thin pots, and they make wonderful pots for eco printing in. Aluminium or aluminum, if you live in America, those are the pots that um, I think as a new eco printer, somebody new to eco printing without powdered mordants, that is your best friend. But you can also look for turkey roasters, for thread, for buttons, for string to tie your bundles up. And if you're a Nuno felter or a felter, you can um, you can look for pattern silk because you can also incorporate that into your Nuno felt. So um, there are so many things that you can look for when you are on that hunt. Now, I'm just going to see, are there any questions now? I, um, if you have a question at this stage, could you please put your three question marks in uh, at the beginning of the question? I'll just pop that up on the screen. So if you have a question about what I have said so far, please just add it as a comment now. And I'm just going to have a little, um, a little scan down through here and see what questions, if any, are already highlight lit for me. Um, so Joanne is asking, has the video ended? Um, I don't think so. Has anybody else got a problem with the video? Um, maybe you could all just give me a thumbs up, please hit the like button, um, on Facebook or YouTube, just to make sure that the video has not ended. Um, because, um, Okay, great. People are saying all good. Just hit, keep hitting that like button. Thanks a million. Um, so that must be a problem with um, Joanne because the video is definitely, it, it has definitely continued. So here's a really, really good um, question from Beatrice. What do you do with white garments which have gone yellowish? And that all depends, Beatrice, on what the fiber composition is. But tomorrow I'm going to share with you about how to prepare your fabric and the sort of results you can expect to get. But I just eco print them. So if it's, if it's an all over yellowish color, I would have no worries whatsoever. I would just treat it as I would any other garment and I would just lay the vegetation out as I'm going to share with you. I'm going to give you some step-by-step -step, step guidance to help you get going. But if it was very much more yellowish in one place, 
<coughs> Excuse me, one second. If it was more yellowish in one place than another, I would say that in that case, I would just be careful when I was laying out my design and I might try and make sure that the tie marks were where some of the worst of the discoloration was. I would make a feature of it and I would then mask it with the dark, dirty pot liquid. So um, that's that. So um, that's interesting. Sarah is saying that the sound is very echoey. I have a really good high powered mic here and I would suspect if the sound is a little bit echoey it might be your internet connection so I'm sorry about that for anybody who has that and um here's just one thing um I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly but Annie is saying hello from Mexico hi from Ireland and the the part about the dry clean only that's when you have fabric and you're looking in the shop and the fabric says dry clean only those are usually the best pieces to buy for eco printing because to me that's a sign that they are maybe silk wool or cashmere only the more delicate fabrics they say dry clean only but that doesn't mean you can't eco print them and it doesn't mean you can't wash them when you know how to do that. And I will be sharing that with you, how I prepare the garments, how I print them, and how I treat them afterwards. And it's also important to note that everything that I'm sharing over the course of the three days, and when we get to the actual eco printing and preparing the pot, every garment that I print, I want that to be able to go through the washing machine. So like this top that I'm wearing, for example, I made this, it's organic H-E-M-P, and uh, it's cream color and eco printed, and I put this through my washing machine. No problems whatsoever. It's been in multiple times, and the color is still as good as when I printed it at the beginning. But that is one of the really important things about working without powdered mordants, you cannot get the same colors as you do working with them. In many cases, I prefer the color. In fact, in 99% of the cases, I prefer the color, but you need to understand you can't use all the same vegetation. And that's where most people go wrong. They throw everything on their piece. Not every leaf will give good prints without powdered mordants, but I'm going to share ones that do with you. So, um, so here is somebody saying, please, can you give a written list of those less well-known fabrics because they've been avoiding them and they're excited to know that Tencel and Viscose will eco print too. Well, I'm happy that that's new to you. And it's important to know that because they're made from a wood pulp, they need to be prepared and printed as if they were cellulose fabric. So the same as if they were cotton or linen. And I will give you the exact how to tomorrow. And I would say that for everybody who registers for the boot camp, as opposed to just watching it, if you register for the boot camp, I am actually going to send you a little thank you gift in about a week's time after the boot camp has ended. And I will actually make sure if Shauna reminds me to write a list of those fabrics down and that will go out in the thank you. So if you've not already registered for the boot camp, I suspect most of you have, but if you haven't already registered for the boot camp, you can still register now. And um, Shauna, if you have a minute, maybe you might post a comment with the registration link, please and just pin it. And then I'll pin a comment to the top of the comment section on YouTube afterwards. And I'll make sure that you get that list of fabric composition types that you can eco print in the thank you. Okay, so that, that was that question there. Okay, <laughs> here's one. <laughs> uh, 232 participants and only 23 likes. Come on, people, show her some love. Thank you so much. It's interesting because some people are um, watching on Facebook and some people are watching on YouTube. So likes are coming in from different ways. But thanks so much. And uh, thanks for saying that. So give me some love. Thanks a million. So if you are um, enjoying 
you know, the information, please do hit the like button because that just means that YouTube will show it to more people and please feel free to share with your friends. So um, now let me just add this to the screen here. So something to look out for when you're getting your garments, and I'll go back to questions in a minute. When you're eco printing garments for the first time, I recommend that you start with simple shapes. That doesn't mean when you're looking for the garments, not to actually look for them. It just means that a simple shape is easier, something like a sleeveless top. So um, when you're looking for the garments, they would be the easiest thing um, to do. And then something that you need to be careful of, um, if there are big underarm stains, um, that might appear after printing. I would use onion skins in that case because onion skins give a much more golden yellow print. And I will be sharing images of eco-printed garments in a minute. And so onion skins, if, if you think there might be an underarm stain, I would use onion skins and put plenty in that sort of area and then you won't see them afterwards. And then I like to plan where the, I want the tie marks to be. And I see that there's a question here. So I am going to, let me just see here. Hang on a second. Um, okay, somebody was asking and I have now missed it, but um, somebody was asking about eco printing on other colors. So absolutely, you can print on any color, but the important thing is you don't want the background color to be too dark because what will happen is you're not going to see your eco prints on top of it. So don't be afraid to try things like a baby blue, pink. I actually, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, I've just, I've had a great find last week. It was a pink polar neck top and it was cashmere silk and wool and I've eco printed that with onion skins and I will be sharing that with you how that was done on Wednesday but tomorrow um I see that um Rachel has a question here what does the dirty pot consist of you are going to get the exact step-by-step -step way of starting your dirty pot that is going to be in day two of the boot camp rachel so today is all about the garments and getting them and um then tomorrow will be about actually getting started with the eco printing and then i will expand on that on day three and so glynis has a question so she has fabrics 50 to 90 percent linen with polyester and rayon so it depends on your experience, Glynis, but I would go, if something was 50% linen and 50% polyester, I would run an absolute mile. I would run a mile now with my experience from garments that were a blend of a protein-based fabric, such as wool, silk, or cashmere, with a cellulose such as cotton. Um, I've had ex very expensive 50% silk, 50% cotton fabric before, and it was an absolutely beautiful fabric. It took the dye color beautifully working with um, dyes, you know, that were with commercial dyes. But when it came to eco printing without mordants, it will take the color if you, if you treat it like cellulose, but it would not be something I would recommend you buy unless it, it's very inexpensive and you want to, um, and you want to experiment. However, if your linen was combined with rayon, in that case, definitely, because they're both considered cellulose, it's only when one is considered to come from an animal and one from a plant that I would avoid the blends. And yeah, Rachel, the dirty pot question, I'll answer that tomorrow. I'm just looking down here now. Um, this is an interesting question. Um, how does eco printing work on textured natural garments, such as hand knitting? Um, if the surface isn't flat. So I have eco printed a large wet felt piece of my own that I had a lot of texture. I did all these bobbly bits in it and it eco printed really well. But you don't get the same clarity of the crisp outline of the print everywhere. The, the more textured the piece, the less you're going to see the clarity of the print. But that doesn't mean you can't print it. And in fact, over the years, I've had some beautiful 
rugs woven for me on old antique looms in a museum in Portugal. And they were woven with local Portuguese merino and they were incredible eco printed. So they took the color very well. Now, excuse me one second, because my cushion is falling off my wobble stool. Oh, in case anybody's wondering, onion skin eco prints on lamb's wool that was locally woven. Okay, so that is that question. I'm gonna keep coming down here now. Um, yes, so um, if it's 80% natural and 20% synthetic i would i would say go for it and you treat it as if it was the natural the 80 percent. i wouldn't be anything like as worried with 20 percent synthetic and um, but i would certainly not go for 50 50. and now um okay so <laughs> this is a good question which really is for tomorrow or the next day um honestly Eco printing is the most incredible process. So it's the same as people often ask me, how can you print cashmere and how can you print wool without it shrinking? Heat and agitation are what cause those fabrics to shrink. So when we make our eco bundle, as I'm going to share with you how to do yours, it will be so tightly compressed and tied tightly and you're not going to be agitating that fabric in the pot and it does not shrink. So you needn't worry about that, but it's a very good question. And um, here's, a, here's a question now from um, Walter. So good evening from Munich. Should I try to eco print felted shirts immediately after finishing with vinegar? Yes, I mean, if you're tired after making the piece, you can leave it for a couple of days, even soaking in vinegar water. Again, I'll give the information for the actual process tomorrow, but you certainly can go straight from the felting to the eco printing, but don't be so physically and mentally tired that you don't enjoy the process. And here is, um, golly, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce this. I'm gonna go with, Mylin, Friedel, maybe, but excuse my pronunciation. So I really do like the cut of your top. Is it your design? No. So this I made during pattern testing for um, Els. Her company is called um, Miss Yusu. Uh, I will also, for those of you who've registered, I will um, give you the link for her um, designs. They're wonderful. She's very good at cutting these different shapes everything fits together beautifully. I'm not an expert sewer, but she creates really wonderful garments that I think are never going to come together and they come together really easily. So um, I will put that out in the thank you as well. Okay. Um, great question. Can you eco dye or eco print over fabric that's already dyed? Absolutely. And I did say that you can use the pale fabrics um, but you can go fairly dark if you know the vegetation that you're going to print with is going to give dark colors, such as the piece that I'm wearing. These leaves here in the middle, um, that's the back of Smokebush or Cotinus against the fabric, and that gives a very dark print. So if I had a darker commercially dyed garment, I would use leaves that I knew would give a dark print. Um, and for anybody who would like to actually register for the boot camp, rather than just join in and watch it, if you actually register, you're going to get the thank you gift from me afterwards in about a week's time. And I'll include as many links as possible for you and resources that will help you find things. Um, now, Jane has a question. Have you used denim successfully? And that's a very big no, Jane, but I've never tried using denim. So I would say white denim, absolutely no problem whatsoever. And I'll share about how to eco print on something like that, either tomorrow or as the first section of day three. Um, I would have no problems with that. I have upcycled denim clothing, uh, some of my own denim jeans and my mother's, and I made a really cool top from it. And it's just really nice to have those. Um, but I haven't eco printed the denim. And then Rachel has asked a second time, what makes the dirty pot? That is what I will share with you tomorrow. I'm coming down here. Um, 
So Sarah is asking, I'm interested in printing shirts with sleeves. Will you show that? Um, Sarah, that is all. There are step-by-step -step videos of that in the Eco Print and Wet Felt Club. So for those of you who don't know, I have a membership club and Sarah is a member. So they are all in that, Sarah, and I will help you find them if you haven't found them yet. So send me an email after the boot camp ends if you don't know where to find them. They are all in your library. Okay. And Glynis is saying she didn't know that rayon was a natural fiber. So it's a man-made fiber from wood pulp, and it's considered natural from the perspective of dyeing. So it's not like um, cotton where they grow the plant and then they spin the fiber. It's a man-made fiber from wood pulp, but it's considered to be um, cellulose. And Sharon is asking, can I show the cushion again? I can. So this is one side and this is the other side. Okay, there we go. So, um, now I haven't got the end of Laura's question. So she practices eco printing, but I'd say she also uses mordants. I think that might be what Laura was going to say. And if you use mordants, you can put mordanted fabric in the dirty pot, but if you use mordants, you don't get the same colors as you do when you don't use mordants. Um, okay, so um, I'm just gonna scroll down really quickly and then, okay, that's all the questions answered for the moment. So I'm going to add this back to the stream again. No. Nope. Uh, okay, I'm gonna add a different one. I'm gonna share some of my garments with you. So, this here is a linen shirt and this shirt, this came, you know, from a thrift store, from an op shop. And note the fact that there are little pin tucks on the front of the garment. So don't be afraid to have, um, you know, to get garments um, with um, details on them. And... Um, I find that ruffles can be really interesting, but don't, just don't just, you know, go for anything. If the, if you like the shape of the garment and it's the fabric that you like by the garment here um, is a cashmere dress. I got this for, I think, four dollars in a thrift store in Canada when I was over there teaching and um, I printed this with um, eucalyptus leaves from my own trees. And this is just a close up shot, a head shot. My friend Meredy Smith took this picture and actually it was lightly raining, but you couldn't see it. And I've worn that with an onion skin eco printed scarf. So um, that, you know, you can see that the golden colors of the onion skins, you know, they, they, um, <laughs> they, show off the, the redder prints from some of the eucalyptus leaves. And uh, thanks very much, so cute, thank you. <laughs> okay, so then um, the next slide, um, these are onion skin prints on a matte silk shirt. So I'm gonna just flip back. And if you just look at the scarf, can you see how there's a shimmer or a shine to the scarf? And then when you look at this shirt, it's very, very flat looking. And that's, um, because of um, the fabric. So this is a very matte fabric and it looks different. Um, okay, now here's a good example of um, upcycling where this dress, which is totally not see-through at all, this was actually a cream underdress under a patterned silk chiffon outer dress and this piece i dismantled it and um it only would fit somebody who is beautiful and slim um and i was facilitating a retreat in lake tahoe 
And I, one of the ladies there was extremely slim and she really loved the pattern silk. Now I had been intending on felting the pattern silk, but it seems such a pity when she put the dress on, it looked amazing on her. So she got the pattern silk and then I eco printed this dress. And if you note, I've put the tie mark lines up around the bust area. I wanted that to be a feature. So the smaller leaves, they're still big, the smaller green leaves and the beautiful brown leaves. Those are actually from a tree called Catalpa and it gives very good eco prints in the dirty pot. And then the green, the big green leaf, it's a weed that looked very like what we in Ireland called, call a dock leaf or a dock plant. But my friend who lives in Lexington, Jan, she didn't know what the name of the weed was, but it was a weed growing in a moist condition. And then this is a piece of upcycling I did myself recently. So this uh, about a week ago. So this is where I bought a jumper. We say jumper, you may say sweater. And it was a beautiful lambswool jumper, but somebody had put it in the washing machine and it got a little bit smaller and it was too small for me to wear. So I actually dismantled it. And this is from the bust area of the jumper down to the bottom. And I eco printed that as a cowl. I eco printed the other parts of it in a different way. So the, the sleeves became arm warmers and then the top portion, let me see. <laughs> this is the top portion of what, that jumper, but it, this is printed with onion skins. And in some countries, people call this a dickie. And I've actually just been up on a photo shoot. I've been up the mountain today and you may see like my face looks quite, um, <laughs> quite warm. That's because it was really hot up the mountain. There was a lot of sun, but I actually had some photos taken of me wearing this underneath another jumper. The idea with the dickie is that you would put it under a jumper or under a shirt or inside a coat and it gives you added warmth in the winter. So from one woolen sweater, I ended up getting arm warmers, getting this particular piece and getting that cowl there. So it's fantastic to be able to get more than one, uh, one, one piece from an item. And uh, Sharon is saying, haven't seen a dickie in years. No. And do you know something, something that would be really cool? Um, in these days, we're all trying to economize in all sorts of ways, but something that would be really, really, really cool as a Christmas present for a good friend would be if you eco printed the bottom part of a sweater that you got in a thrift store and you made arm warmers and then you popped a bottle of wine in one, you know, you put it upside down, you put a bottle of wine in, it would make wonderful packaging for giving a gift of wine and giving the second, maybe give two, two bottles of wine with the arm warmers. Okay, so I'm going to just go back down. If you have a question, now would be a good time to drop it in the comments for me, please. And I'm just going to check um, what questions we have here. And I'm conscious of the time. I'm going to really get into the eco printing tomorrow. Uh, Laura, I see you have a question about, um, about using mordants. That's not what I'm talking about today at all. I'm talking about the eco printing process tomorrow. But one of, one of the really big issues with using traditional powdered mordants is the health implication of inhaling the powder. That's the biggest, um, that's the biggest um, issue with traditional powdered mordants from that perspective. So I would just say, be careful with that. So um, Mylin is asking, which sewing thread do you recommend if you're sewing a piece before dyeing? So I personally, if I'm sewing a piece and then going to eco print or, or natural dye with some plants from my garden, I sew with silk thread. Uh, it's very easy to use. I put silk thread in the bobbin and the upper, um, the upper one, and that will take any natural dye color or indigo really easily. If I'm making a piece such as this one here, I printed this fabric, I didn't, you know, this, this fabric here isn't printed at all. So I printed the fabric first and then I combined it with plain fabric, the same sort of fabric. But I recommend that you use silk thread. That would be my top preference. And then I also sometimes use cotton thread. If I would, you know, it depends what I'm doing, but usually I would use silk. Then, um, 
What's the best density for silk, cotton, and HEMP? Is there a threshold, too thin or too thick? Honestly, you can eco print almost anything so long as it's flexible enough to roll it up. And I haven't eco printed calico. And yes, you could eco print calico. But I do find with some of the cotton based fabrics, they have loads of things, loads of finishing, um, loads of things added to them in the manufacturing process. And they can be really difficult to get um, to remove and to print successfully. But the thickness isn't an issue. You can print any thickness whatsoever. Um, and then, um, as I say, we're going to talk about the eco printing bit tomorrow. But I would say absolutely no. If leaves have been preserved with um, glycerin, I would not be using them. Cat, I'm going to discuss the eco printing process and how to prepare your dirty pot tomorrow. And at that stage, I will explain what the mordant is. Um, okay, so I'm not sure if Shauna can still hear me, but she's saying that the link that was posted to register doesn't seem to be working. I'm just going to scroll up and see here. Um, that looks like the correct link. So um, I'll ask Shona to check that. It looks like the correct link. Um, so we'll after the live stream ends, I will check the link myself and make sure it's pinned as the top comment in the video description on YouTube. Um, okay. So Cynthia is saying, I think I'm in the club. I got your ebook there or how do we join? So my Eco Print and Wet Felt Club, it's a membership club. Um, there's a monthly or an annual subscription and it only has opened for membership twice in the last year. It will be opening again for membership in January. And um, that is something for another day. I will, after the free boot camp ends on Wednesday night, I am going to have a really exciting thing that I suspect many of you may be interested in. It's going to be a $49 event happening with me where I will take you step by step through everything on a daily basis for eight days necessary to eco print your garments or eco print anything. So um, that could be really exciting for some of you. It's not going to be the same as a workshop or the club. There won't be the same interaction with me on an ongoing basis, but there will be uh, really good information over the period of eight days. So um, people are putting some really nice comments. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Um, and here's another question about the actual eco printing process. So no, I don't. I'm not steaming them. I'm putting them into my pot liquid most of the time. So I'm not putting the fabric and plants. I'm not wrapping them in anything. I'm putting them into the dirty pot liquid. And that's the magic of this process. That liquid really helps get the prints that I want. And I am going to give you the step-by-step -step recipe tomorrow for that. Um, so Linda has a question. Would single cotton cord work? I, I would just avoid it. I think it would be a waste of your time, Linda, because you've got that, the whale of the cotton, that little bumpy bit. I just wouldn't bother with it myself. If you want an honest answer. If you decided you were going to do it, onion skins would be the way to go for an abstract design, but I think you might be disappointed. Um, Glynis is saying she likes the idea of taking things apart. Yeah, me too, Glynis. I And I'm going to show you something in a minute. Um, actually, I'll show it to you now. So here is a picture of a piece. This really is really upcycled or upcycling in action. So this here is a jumper or a sweater that I have worn multiple, multiple times. So the body, the eco printed body and the top of the sleeves from the front and the back, they were two wool baby under blankets that I bought in a thrift store when I was facilitating a retreat in America, in Australia. And I printed the two of them using eucalyptus leaves that were available where I was staying on Lake Macquarie. And 
I hadn't intended cutting them to make something, but when I came home, my brother-in-law had somehow managed to put his beautiful merino, very soft merino jumper into the washing machine with dark clothes on a hot wash. My sister didn't manage to stop him. So his jumper really, really ended up the size that a child might wear. So I cut it up and I only managed to get these pieces. I got the sleeves to make the lower portion of the arms and the body of the jumper has made the neck there. So I decided to cut up the blankets and I really, really like this. I've worn it so much and it is really warm. And that jumper pattern is the, to or sweater pattern, it's called the toaster sweater. It's um, a really, really good pattern. Um, it's meant for knitted fabrics, but there, there's enough give in the neck and the sleeves that I can get this on and it's really, really warm. So that is a really good example, I think, of, of a garment that has been combining part of something that's got too small and something else. Now, um, Julia is putting a name up. Thank you. Yes, I, I just don't know, Julia, about that. It definitely looks like our doc as well. Um, and you see, this was in America and the leaves are all so much bigger there. And OK, so I'm just going to re remove that there. I'm going to keep answering your questions and then we'll probably call it quits for tonight. Um, so. Yes, I pre-wash everything. And um, I think I'm going to just go into that tomorrow about how to do the pre-washing, how to set your dirty pot up and exactly what's happening with the dirty pot. I'm going to give you the step-by-step, -step, Valerie, for washing your garments tomorrow. And um, Sharon is saying, if I weave tea towels with a cotton, I don't know what cotton is, how well will they stand up to washing? Um, Sharon, how well will your tea towels stand up to washing, forgetting about eco printing? Because I don't know, only you know how tightly you're weaving. But if they will stand up to washing, you can also eco print them. Um, and then this question from the hunting, should we be looking for a certain type of a pot? I definitely recommend aluminium is the best. And I will be going through that tomorrow and I will be explaining why. So I'm going to give you how to prepare your fabric tomorrow, you know, how to prepare it, and then the eco printing process. And I will continue with that then on Wednesday. So I'm just looking to see, are there more comments? Yes, there are. Here's something from, oh, Helena, thank you so much for your lovely comment. Your work is absolutely amazing and some pieces are astonishing. Thank you so much. Um, absolutely. If items have become yellow with age, they're perfect for eco printing, absolutely perfect. And you can just reinvent them. And I have certain pieces that I've had for four or five years. Um, one top comes to mind. It cost me $1 in Tucson, Arizona in a church sale. I eco printed it. It was wonderful. I wore it for several years. Then I <coughs> revamped it by putting it into rust water to bring the prints to life again. And ultimately, I over dyed it with indigo. So you can do things many times and you can keep wearing things that you love. So definitely, if garments have gone yellow or tablecloths or old sheets, you can use them in the eco printing process. And then um, I can't answer this question any more perfectly, but calico is made from cotton fiber, I think. Um, Absolutely, you can use dried leaves. And yes, I, I reconstitute them in water. I will discuss that during the eco printing process. And Joanne, I definitely will not be discussing eco printing on leather. There are people who specialize in that and I don't. And this boot camp is all about the foundations of eco printing upcycled clothing and helping people get started, giving you a clear recipe so that you can get started after you've watched the three boot camp videos. You know what fabric will print well, what garments, how to set your pot up, what vegetation to use, and you will know how to print them, how to prepare the fabric before and how to treat it afterwards so you can wash it in your washing machine like all my work. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down and see are there any more. Um, 
Golly, I think, Shauna, that definitely not those links. Sorry. Um, and Julia is saying the link is correct. She's just registered. I think the link is also correct, Julia. Thank you. Um, Florence is asking, or uh, Florencia is asking, how long are the daily sessions? If you mean the boot camp, as long as they need to be, and hopefully no longer, approximately an hour. But I do want to answer your questions. So it really just depends how many questions come in. And um, Sarah's just asking, when are you doing the $49 event? Sarah, that's just going to open for registration. It's going to be open for registration once the boot camp on Wednesday ends. I will explain about it and I will give more information and continue to answer questions for the next few days. Um, so the registration will open on Wednesday night at the end of the boot camp and registration will close on Sunday night, and then the $49 event starts on Monday. Okay, um, so I think I've already answered this, Linda. I would say no to that one. Um, Linda is asking, can tie marks be masked by wrapping projects in plastic? And the simple answer is yes. But my answer is going to be no, 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 no. If you have an environmentally responsible textile practice, please only use plastic if you absolutely have to. So what you could do to be more environmentally mindful, Linda, would be you could just wrap um, bandages, for example, like an elastic bandage around your, your bundle after you've rolled it up. You could, you could continue to roll the bundle in an old sheet and that would then take the main color and then you wouldn't get the tie marks. Um, <laughs> yeah, here, I'm gonna go through. That's fantastic. Go through my stained garments later today. And um, yeah, absolutely. I think get everything ready. And by the end of our three days together, you're gonna to know how to do them or you may choose to join me and spend eight days with me where we do them together. Okay. So I just want to check my next question. Question. Okay. Oh, yeah. So Helene is saying, do you call a dirty pot one that you use over and over again without being washed or cleaned? I was impressed with one you showed outside, but is this technique doable in an apartment kitchen? So I will explain all about it tomorrow, what it actually is, because I don't want to get sidetracked now and i'm conscious of the time but yes it is the pot that you just keep reusing the pot liquid yes you can do it in an apartment kitchen but i would then recommend that you would um th there's tips for the eco printing which i'm going to be giving you tomorrow so come back tomorrow helena and if i don't answer your question tomorrow just make sure you remind me but absolutely you can eco print in your in your kitchen but you need to have really good ventilation and um Woohoo, Cynthia, that's great. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited. First time I've done it, and I think it's going to be fantastic. Um, okay, so um, let me just see. Um, oh, this is really interesting. Thank you, Sarah. So Sarah is saying cotton linen. So it must be the beginning of cotton and the end of linen. Cotton linen is part cotton and part, part linen. That would definitely uh, print really nicely. Um, and Sharon is asking an eco printing question, which is for tomorrow or the next day. Absolutely not, Sharon. Nothing. They will give you nothing whatsoever, I'm afraid. And Valerie has worked in a crock pot and we'll discuss pots tomorrow. Um, so let me just see. I'm going down through the rest of the questions. That's why my eyes appear to be looking sideways. Um, I'm going to be discussing, I'm going to give you a certain amount of information about plants and it doesn't matter what the fabric is it's the it's how you prepare the fabric all the plants that i give you will print on any of the fabric okay and um, you are so welcome donada thank you and um Eva is asking, or Ava is asking a question. Again, this might be something I discuss a little bit tomorrow. The older the leaf in general, the stronger the print. But colorful leaves in the fall do not necessarily give you colorful eco prints. They do not necessarily even print unless you use mordants. But the older the leaf is in general, the better it prints. 
Um, so just excuse me, squinting sideways. Sharon's saying she's so excited. I am too. And something really fantastic about eco printing. I never get up in the morning and don't want to get up. I'm always, I'm always there. And you'll never look at leaves the same way again. Whether you live in an urban environment, whether you live in a rural environment, you will look at every plant differently once you understand the power of that plant. And I did mean to um, say also that everything that, that we do can be broken down into smaller sections. So if you feel overwhelmed, if you think, gosh, I haven't got a full day to do something, and that's one of the things that the, the upcoming $49 thing will go through. It will just show you how you can do bit by bit and, and do a little bit every day for a few days running and end up with something beautiful. It doesn't all have to be done at the one time because time is really important and space is really important for people and knowing how to start correctly, how to set up the dirty pot, what vegetation to use and what fabric. So those are all things that I'm covering over the course of these three days. Um, so here's a question from Maureen. She lives in New Zealand and will be going to Vietnam on holidays and she's hoping to buy silk for eco printing. She hasn't done any yet. Is it okay to buy colored or dyed silk? So that's the same as buying a colored or dyed garment and um, Maureen. First of all, there is a slight risk with silk in particular. And if it's come, if it's come from India, um, Indian silk, like sari silk maybe can really, really lose its color. Um, when it's heated, we're going to be boiling our pieces for quite a long time when we're not working with those traditional powder mordants or chemicals to fix the color. So I would certainly say a pale silk is fine. But if you live in New Zealand, I cannot recommend enough that you investigate Marion in beautiful silks in Australia. And if you've registered Maureen for this, um, for the boot camp, I'm not sure if you have. But look in the video description afterwards on YouTube. If you register for the boot camp, I will um, be giving you, a, you know, a thank you gift, which will contain quite a bit of information about a week after the boot camp ends. And that will just be helpful for you. And so um, there will be some resources there. And I highly recommend Marion in Beautiful Silks. And um, Karen, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, thanks. And um, Paula, thank you so much. And uh, Laura is asking, how many times can you reuse eucalyptus leaves? I only like to eco print with them once, Laura, but then I reuse them by putting the leaves into the dirty pot and they continue to release some color. But for me, they are not worth eco printing with again. Now, I know that some people who work with mordants, they do use them again, but they're not processing the bundles for as long because the mordant, the chemical is helping fix the color. We're processing for longer, so more of that natural dye will be re released. Um, so Helena, thank you so much, Helena, for your absolutely lovely comment. And yes, th these videos are all being recorded because I'm conscious that um, people are in different time zones. And while I know some people are watching early in the morning and some are watching late at night, it's hard to get a time that everybody worldwide is available and people may be at work. So yes, they will be available on YouTube afterwards. It takes probably half an hour for the video to optimize, but you can watch it afterwards on YouTube. So as long as YouTube is up and running and it's the second largest search engine in the world, the videos will be available. And, um, Yes. So um, if Nicola says, I'm going to make a note or Sean, could you make a note of um, Nicola's um, name, please? And we will just check. But if you are getting emails, yes, you have registered and you will get the thank you gift afterwards. Um, thank you so much, Romilly. I really hope it's the correct name. <laughs> thank you, Bonnie. You're sending me really, really nice, nice comments here. Thank you so much. Um, yes, New Zealand wool. I absolutely adore uh, New Zealand wool, Liz. And there are some wonderful um, fabric suppliers. And then, of course, wet felting suppliers um, there. Um, Lisa's asking a question about ghosting. Lisa, um, I think if you could ask that maybe tomorrow, it's not really appropriate for today. And But the simple answer actually is yes, you can, but you need to maybe use one or uh, two layers maybe. Um, okay. 
So, um, Mylan, I mean, you can always um, bleach if you use bleach, but it's not necessarily good for the fabric and I don't do it. So that's something if you're used to doing that as a technique for textiles, yes. But I think if you use bleach, maybe on wool or silk, it might damage the fiber. I think maybe it would be cotton. So that would be something that, you know, you certainly could. Um, Eleanor's asking, have you decided? Absolutely, Eleanor. It's going to start on Monday next week. Yes, it's going to start on Monday next week, but the content will be available to everybody for about six weeks. And um, so if so, that will give you time to go through everything. There's going to be a small live element each day, but there'll be loads of videos and texts and things. And you'll see step by step for all sorts of things. I will explain all about that on Thursday and very briefly after the boot at the end of the boot camp on Wednesday. And uh, Rachel, fabulous. Oh, I'm really happy that you're all looking there. Um, so Jody it has a question. Soy milk or rust water? Um, Jody, if you mean, like, this is really not a question for this video, but if you mean you're about to eco print now, um, like soy milk is something that needs to be done several times and dried in between and after the final dip, um, dry it and then wet the fabric again. All fabric needs to be wet before it goes into the eco printing pot. And if you dip into your rust water, uh, it goes straight into the pot. I'm going to explain all this tomorrow. Some of these um, questions are not really for this, but I don't want not to answer your questions. Um, <coughs> yes, Joe, I agree entirely. It's absolutely, um, it, it, it's, a good addiction. It's an addiction in a good way. I think it's just a really fantastic process. Tammy, you're so welcome. Thank you so much. Tammy is another club member. Thanks a million, Tammy. Glad you're enjoying it. Uh, Glynis, thank you so much. Um, wow, <laughs> what a nice way to get out of bed. That's really funny. Like I'll be heading to bed early today, but sometimes I live stream early in the morning. Um, oh, this is quite funny. Uh, my friend sent me a link to a song called I'll Rust With You. That's really good. Uh, I'm not sure who uh, follows me on Instagram, but but um, Sean, if you wouldn't mind putting up my Instagram handle, it's at Nicola Brown Clashine. But if you look at the video that's pinned to my profile, I have one that's going viral at the moment. It's over two million and a few hundred thousand. And um I have a really funny song with that. It's, it's, I love onions and it's about onions. So I quite understand why your friend sent you that. That's really funny. Um, so um, I see this question and I have never done it. However, I know one of my workshop students ha uh, in the past got fantastic prints. I think it was from Dyer's Polypore, but I don't know enough about mushrooms. Um, Okay, Mickey is saying, so she's, sorry she joined late. Can you refer me to the $49 thing so I can catch up? I won't be announcing that properly until Wednesday. So on Wednesday, I will be announcing it. I will be putting a link to the registration with the information in all the video descriptions. And then on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I'll continue to answer your questions about the boot camp and give you more information. Like I'll actually launch the $49 product properly. I'll give you all the information about that. And LT is asking, can you print with pine or cedar? I have not got any prints, but some people have, but I have never. Um, thank you so much. Whoa, greetings back to Argentina from Ireland. Uh, thank you all so much. And I think I'm just getting ready to wrap up. I'm just going to whip down and see, are there any final questions? So if you have a final question, could you just drop it in now, please? Because we're well over an hour. Um, I am not sure about suppliers in South Africa, but I will, if you send me an email in about two weeks time, Beatrice, um, I will try and find one for you. Um, you're welcome, Linda. I'm very happy. I, I really like what I do. So I enjoy giving back. And then 
Some of you will join the $49 program, no doubt. I mean, I'm not saying you will, but some of you will most likely. And that way, you know, this is my thanks to everybody, but I'll I'll just share loads in the in the $49 thing. Uh, okay, um, so here, oh, wow, thank you so much. This lecture has been wonderful, inspiring, and quite frankly, life-affirming and worth getting up for in the morning. Thank you so much. That is the most wonderful comment. Thank you very much. I'm really glad that you have enjoyed it. Um, that is fantastic. And thank you so much, Mylin. And wow, and here, watching at 1 o'clock a.m. on the wrong side of the world. Woo, thank you so much for taking the time to join in. I really appreciate every one of you. Um, Oh, this is fantastic. Ellie, honestly, oh my goodness, wait till you get the basics tomorrow. I'm getting goosebumps. You are going to have such success if you stick to what I recommend. <laughs> if you go off piste, even the tiniest bit, and use other vegetation or do something different, you won't get the results. But if you like the prints that I do and you listen to what I say and you do what I say, you are going to have such success. Okay. You're very welcome, um, Cynthia. Oh yeah, I love. I'm a lifelong gardener as well, and eco printing is such a joy when you can grow all your own plants as well. But even if you live in a in a really built up city environment, it's amazing how many plants and weeds and things there are out there that you can have access to that will print. And um, yes. Um, if you ask me this question again tomorrow, I'm going to give you my top desert uh, plant. I'm not sure which desert you're going to, but you can uh, ask the question tomorrow when I'm discussing eco printing rather than today is meant to be more about the garments and I'll give you my top um, plant for the desert climate. Um, okay. Yeah, Julia is asking about leaves other than eucalyptus. I mean, I'm going to be sharing stuff with you tomorrow. Um, okay, this is really great. So Aksha, I hope that's how you pronounce your name, a newcomer in the journey, a little bit about nerve, uh, nervous about it, and the knowledge is giving power to do more. And that's what I really hope. I want to make things easy so that whether you're new or you have experience and you want to learn a, a new way of working in a more environmentally mindful way and health conscious way, I want to just equip you with everything you need to have success. And I'm a big believer that if you have good success at the very beginning and you learn the foundations properly, well, then you go off in your own direction and you have fun. But you can have a really bad experience at the beginning or you can have prints that look quite good and then they wash or they fade or they change color really quickly. So I want everything, like even my lambs will, like the cushion, Everything can go in the washing machine afterwards. I have no worries whatsoever about that. Maureen, I suspect that you are already registered, but um, Shona, would you mind just taking Maureen's name there, please? And we'll check tomorrow um, about that. But there will be a link, Maureen, in the video description when I finish the video in a couple of minutes. Um, it needs to be optimized, but look in the video description below on YouTube afterwards. And for those of you who don't already subscribe to me on YouTube, consider subscribing and um, you'll be able to register there. OK, wow. Hi, back to Iceland. Um, yes. Sorry if you had problems logging in, but all the three videos will be available afterwards so you can watch them again. This is brilliant. This is brilliant, Laura. Um, and the desert plants. Yes, tomorrow, tomorrow. Well, another nice comment. Thank you so much. Last until I got your ebook. Thanks for that. That I'm really glad you found that helpful. Um, okay. Yeah, this is an interesting comment. Um, a copper and tin are very powerful mordants and they're so bad for your health, et cetera. So it is really important. I mean, we all make choices. If I am naturally dyeing something using um, weld, for example, from my garden, I will mordant, but I will mordant in a very mindful way. I will wear a mask. I will. You can also mordant with um, plant-based mordants called Simplicos. 
but you have to make that choice. Do you want to go down that route or not? And for me, I want to be as environmentally mindful all the time. Okay. This is fantastic. Yeah, Beatrice, it is going to be fantastic. I cannot wait to see what people do. So there will be eight days. And then on the ninth day, uh, we'll have like a little graduation party. And I think what I'll do on the ninth day is do it at two different times. So people in different parts of the world can join in. So I might have a glass of wine on the uh, myself on the ninth day in the evening, but I'll have a coffee in the morning. So um, this is my Instagram link if you want to have a look over on Instagram for those of you who are there. Thank you, Shauna, for putting that in the chat. Um, then I think that's about it. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, you're so welcome, Vivian. I'm glad you're inspired. And honestly, just get going. And the great news is providing you work with natural fabric and not some awful artificial mix, you're almost guaranteed to get good results, but you don't get good results all the time. And that happens to everybody, including me. And the beauty of eco printing in the dirty pot is if you have bad results on a piece, you can overprint it. So you can print it again. Thanks, Karen. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just so glad Instagram is a way of meeting your tribe. Um, you know, you meet people who like the same things, who like walking in the country, who like gardening, who like good food, who like natural fabrics, who obviously like eco printing, who like felting, who like recycling. So um, it's really nice to meet similar um, like minded people. And then for um, people who, who I've known for a much longer period of time, such as Sarah. Sarah and I haven't physically met, but I feel like we know each other, like we're old friends. It's really fantastic to make friends and connections like that online. Okay, you're welcome, Neve. Okay, I'm just rushing down through these. Um, so, um, so, um, Helena, um, uh, if you just check back about um, a couple of minutes, uh, 20 minutes after this ends, if you just check back, I can see you're watching on YouTube. If you look in the video description, you will be able to get the link to register for the boot camp. So anybody on YouTube can watch it, but people who register, they are going to get that thank you gift from me. So I'd really appreciate if all of you would share with a friend, that would be even better. And actually, maybe Shauna, you might just drop that um, link into the chat again so Helena could copy and paste it. Um, see there, um, Helena. So it's in the chat, I think, and um, you should be able to copy and paste that. Okay, that's it. Um, it, 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 I'm just saying, are there any more final questions? So um, animal fibers are easier to print um, as a new eco printer, but many of you live in hot climates and you really want to print cellulose fabric and I'm going to be sharing both. They both print really well and that's all happening tomorrow. Okay. Um, Oh, here, this is great. Uh, Emily was able to print beautiful samples just by looking at my previous boot camp. So you can all do it. Yes, Emily, I absolutely agree. Everybody can do it. And thanks for that encouragement. And um, Ulrika, thank you. See you tomorrow. Um, so here we have Kathleen lives in California in desert. You are going to have great fun. You have access to different plants than we do, but you're going to, the desert climate is fantastic. You're going to be able to eco print and you will be able to print. Well, okay. Um, Tracy, um, copper is a slow acting it, it, it doesn't act the same way as cast iron or aluminium. I'm discussing pots tomorrow and you can answer that again. Copper is an option for a pot, but it's not an option for a new eco printer. It's only an option as an additional one. I actually haven't used one for years, I have to say. Um, so, okay. So that's it, ladies. And Rachel just has, has 
Okay, so same time, sorry. Uh, yes, uh, let me do Bonnie. Bonnie, yes, the same time tomorrow. I'm going to go live each day this week at 6 p.m. The first three days are the boot camp, and that's all the free information, everything. And then I will explain about the eight day product, which you'll find all about. Then on Thursday, I'm going to go into more detail about what that will entail and what you can expect to do. And then over, you know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I'll explain more about that eight day thing. And I will also answer any more follow on questions from the boot camp. And then um, this is a good question from Rachel. How many hours each day? So I have designed it so that you can just do it really relatively quickly each day. The whole concept behind the product is that you can, that everything can be broken down. Like if you can spend as long as you like looking at some of the information, but that everything can be broken down. If you have 15 or 20 minutes each day at the beginning until we get to the weekend, you can have everything ready to go and then you can just have, have a good session at the weekend and you have a whole mountain of pieces done by the end of that. But equally, if you don't have a lot of time on the day that you're going to physically print your pieces, you can split that up and I'll tell you how. how. But there's not going to be loads of time spent every individual day. But I'm going to explain all about it and how it will run on Thursday. Okay. So... <laughs> Jenny's saying she's wishing she'd held on to her white denim. Well, you, you can just ask your friends if any of them got them in the back of their wardrobes. Um, okay, and so 9.25 in Turkey. My goodness, it's 7.25 here. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. Um, and Catherine has a question um, just about identifying fabric. And this is my final thing for today. Um, so, Catherine, from experience, I think it, it, it really didn't take me long to be able to work out what fabric was. I mean, if something is a blend of wool and cashmere, I might know for sure exactly what it is, but it's going to feel soft and I'll know it's either cashmere or wool. But if something looks like it's silk and it's a polyester, it feels different. It actually... You can feel it with your fingertips. So my top recommendation is when you're looking at fabric, just uh, let me stand up for a second. You know, just put your hand in somewhere where you can feel the garment and just run the garment under your fingers. There's a very distinct difference between uh, polyester and silk. Um, interestingly, polyester and silk would be more likely to get confused than rayon and silk. But but each fiber and fabric feels different on the, under my hands. Linen feels, um, cotton feels smoother than linen. Linen has a little bit more texture, even if they're very finely woven. Linen still has a different feel than cotton. So you start to get used to it. And if you're buying things in thrift stores, you can afford probably to make a couple of mistakes and just learn from experience. But almost every garment has a tag somewhere. Often you have to really look under the lining to find it if it has lining. But I think you just will get, get more used to it. And yeah, um, Sharon is saying polyester is, is awful to touch. I, I would agree, but I don't want to be rude to anybody if they like polyester. Um, the dreaded sisters, Polly and Esther, um, I always remember a golf um, commentator saying that it was very fun. And um, I personally don't do a burn test for fabric. But if, if that's something that you can do, of course, you could do it. But you can't exactly try that out in a thrift store and try and burn something in there. Um, so I just think getting used to how the different fibers feel under your fingers, it's almost an instinct. So. Look, I didn't mean to go on for so long, but thank you so much to everybody who stuck it to the very end. I'm very impressed and it's been a pleasure. I hope you've enjoyed this and um, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And for those of you who are actually going to watch this as the replay afterwards, you know, you're watching through the Irish nighttime, please feel free to ask your questions as a comment on YouTube and I will try and answer them. It may not be over the next three days. It may not be until after the boot camp ends, but I will try and answer them. And Shauna, uh, thank you so much, Shauna, um, for uh, joining me. So Shauna and I will say good night and you will see us tomorrow. So 
over and out from Ireland and Shauna? Switzerland. <laughs> In the mountains of in Switzerland. <laughs> okay, over and out from Ireland and Switzerland. Thank you so much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you tomorrow. Ciao. <laughs>